In September, a new mechanic for World of Tanks was announced at WG Fest, double-barreled vehicles. Straight after the announcement, we started testing it on the Super Test. Our test vehicle saw many battles on the internal server over a period of several weeks. During testing, the inner workings and parameters of the mechanic were modified. Now it fits organically into the World of Tanks battle ecosystem. But there's still work to be done, and the next big step is a very important one testing particular vehicles with this mechanic. At this stage, we plan to add four vehicles to the game. One of them, the Object 703 version 2, was used as the test vehicle. After the successful test, it may be added to the game as a Tier 8 premium vehicle, just as players thought. Let's talk about the other vehicles in more detail. We gathered a lot of information on the topic. Our historical consultants studied all the available data and blueprints thoroughly. Certain components of manufactured and prototyped Soviet vehicles were used for creating the game models of double-barreled vehicles. Technical solutions were thoroughly worked on by our specialists, and they're all based on real blueprints. Installing double-barreled guns almost always affected the width of the vehicles, as well as the length of the hull and turret. Increasing the number of crew members and the amount of ammunition led to an increased turret volume. In some cases, the turret race ring diameter had to be widened, which affected the hull width as well. The vehicles became heavier. The contact surface length had to be increased to keep the crossing capacity high. This made the hull longer. And finally, more powerful diesel engines were needed. Despite all that, many vehicle elements weren't too different from similar vehicles with a single gun. Working on the vehicle models looked just like building a construction set. Some details were completely new. Others were elements from old vehicles. That means if these vehicles had been built, they would look exactly like they do in our game. The branch will start with the IS-2 version 2 heavy tank. You can guess from the name that it's an upgraded version of the famous IS. But the transition will happen from the KV-3, because some components of this vehicle are better suited to this branch. At Tier 8, we plan to test two top-tier gun options. The first one is a 100mm gun. With it, we want to focus not on damage per shot, but making the new mechanic more accommodating. The shot preparation time will be shorter, and the guns will be locked after the double shot for a shorter period as well. With the 122mm gun, we want to focus primarily on the damage per shot, but the new mechanic will not be as adaptable. The key differences of the IS-2 version 2 from a normal IS will mainly be the damage per shot and penetration. The stats will be better because of the peculiarities of the double-barreled guns and being a higher tier. Movement speed will be okay, a bit slower than its tier mates, but pretty comparable. The weak point of the vehicle is its hull armor. It was inherited from the tier 7 vehicle, however, the turret will be better armored. At tier 9 is the IS-3 version 2. Its hull is very similar to the IS-3, so it's not very well armored for tier 9. The turret also has been gifted from the IS-3, but it was heavily modified to mount the double-barreled guns. The caliber of the guns themselves is 122mm, and the damage per shot is 390 hit points. The vehicle will be pretty mobile for its tier. For tier 10, we have a pretty famous vehicle that was anticipated by players, the ST-2. Let's talk a bit more about it and compare it with the ST-1. The hull shape and armor are pretty much identical. The turret also has not changed very much. The reason for that is that the ST tank project was developed with two versions, ST-1 and ST-2. The turret design was created to facilitate the installation of double-barreled guns from the very beginning. The gun caliber will stay as 122mm, the same as the IS-4 and the ST-1. The damage per shot will be 440 hit points. The most important feature of these new vehicles is that they have several firing modes. Each of them has its own peculiarities. Let's use the ST-2 as an example for how a double-barreled vehicle can behave in battle. The main and easiest to understand mode is cyclical. There are just a couple of nuances. After shooting the active left gun, it starts reloading. The camera automatically switches to the right gun and it becomes active. After the left gun is loaded, take another shot. Now the right gun starts reloading, the camera goes back to the left gun and the process repeats. 
It's similar to firing a normal vehicle but with a shifting aiming camera. It's unusual but easy to get used to. The second mode is consecutive firing. After shooting the active gun, the camera shifts. However, you can't fire the second gun right away. The timer on the left shows when you can shoot. It's similar to the well-known and understood mechanic of reloading between shots. It's generally quite short, up to 5 seconds. When the timer ends, you can fire from the second gun. It's important to remember that loading the first gun will be interrupted, and the sequential loading of both shells will start again. This is why it's beneficial to wait a couple of seconds to fully load the first gun. The third and the most interesting and unusual mode is the double shot. No other vehicle can do it. To fire both guns, click and hold the left mouse button. The shot preparation will start, which lasts about 3 to 4 seconds. The double shot will be fired automatically after preparation. The progress is shown close to the reticle. It can be cancelled at any time simply by releasing the left mouse button. It's important to note that after the double shot, both guns are locked for a couple of seconds. They cannot be fired or loaded during this period. After they are unlocked again, the shells are loaded sequentially to both guns. After both guns are fully loaded, you can fire both guns again. You can do that as often as you like. Double-barrel vehicles have several qualities that differentiate them from other vehicles. It's important to remember that both guns are still a single module, so if one of your guns is critically damaged, the other one will not be able to fire. Also, you're easier to spot after a double shot than after a single one, because a double shot exposes your vehicle much more than a standard one. The third quality is the fact that if your two shells hit, you have a higher chance to damage internal modules or injure crew members. This vehicle is suitable for combat at a short or medium distance. You play it like a classic Soviet heavy. Close in on the enemy, angle your hull, bounce a shot, fire back. But there's one more thing. You can always fire a second shell if your enemy makes a mistake. And the main thing is, of course, the double shot. The enemy won't anticipate this, and if it hits, it always deals an immense amount of damage to them. However, this mechanic has a downside too the shot preparation time. It must be considered before the shot. The gun lock is a pretty lengthy period that should be considered after the shot. And of course, the shell loading itself. During reloading and a very long period of passive behavior, you must understand that you have two options. Wait for this long reload in a safe spot somewhere, or end up back in the garage. Double-barreled vehicles have another peculiar feature. We didn't show it in the first video, but it's now time to show you some exclusive content. After the double shot, the vehicle rolls back a little, but if you played a certain great car stealer game, you surely remember that if you turn the turret 180 degrees, get some speed and take a shot, this will happen. The vehicles will be tested internally before hitting the common test. Each of them will have its own test cycle, during which their characteristics will change. Developers are constantly in search of an optimal ratio between pros and cons for the double-barreled guns. They will balance their power with changes to such parameters as switching time between guns, shell loading time, shot preparation time, and gun locking time. And only after the vehicles are fully configured will we decide whether to add them to the game. In the meantime, share your opinions in the comments and leave your feedback on the forums. Good luck on the battlefield.